Well, I'm, I'm sitting here with Corey. Corey, um, you had an opportunity to speak here at the conference, and I want to talk about a, l a little bit about your call, the call yeah. of God upon your own, your own personal life. Let's break that down a little bit. When did the call of God got stirred in your heart, where mm -hmm. you were at, and where you're at today? Yeah, I mean, it started, I, I got radically saved when I was 23. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody shared the gospel with me, and by myself, I gave, <clears throat> gave my life to the Lord right there, you know. And it was one of those just night and day things woke up and my family was like, you're a different person, you know. So there was a, a strong desire to serve the Lord. Just, I, I didn't even really know what I was doing, but from the beginning, it was just a very radical, like, okay, I want to know the, the Lord. I want to know what this Bible says. And then I started going to church. I wanted to go more and more. So there was a desire to serve and to live my life for the Lord from an early on. But um, as I was growing in those first few years, um, I thought the Lord might be calling me to be a pastor, um, but I wasn't sure. And then I went to... Um, I talked about it in, my, in the study, but I, I went on a mission trip with my church to the country of Chile. It was after a big earthquake that hit there, and we wanted to go help. And actually, my pastor called Dale here hmm. at Golden Springs, like, okay, you guys do stuff in Chile. What should we do? And you guys sent us down uh, to the Bible college. Hmm. And we were serving there, and I was just, well, I was falling in love with the culture. I, I fell in love with Chile and all of those things. But what hit me was <clears throat> there was such a lack of the Word of God, especially even in, within the churches. Hmm. And the Lord gave me the verses in Romans 10, 14, and 15, you know, how shall they believe unless they have heard, how shall they hear, you know, unless someone preaches. And he kept giving me that verse, but there was a, a, a night of worship there, and that same verse, Romans 10 and 14, was given to me. Nobody knew what the Lord was doing in my heart, and it was a very, like, prophetic, clear, like, the Lord was calling me, and he gave me a vision in that moment of his, like, of sheep on a hillside, and just said, you need to feed my sheep. That was the call. And it was like, I didn't say anything. I just was this, this powerful moment. And my pastor comes up, puts his hand on my shoulder and says, well, you know you've been called. And really that was the confirmation of calling to, to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. But really it was, the, it was where I was like, and I don't think it's in the United States. Mm -hmm. I believe it's other places that don't have the blessing that we have in many places in the United States. I mean, right here, this is an awesome church. We love it. And there's more in the area. There's places... In South America, you can find a church that's teaching the word like this for hundreds of miles. And God loves them as much as he loves us here. Mm. And he began to say, I want you to feed my sheep specifically in South America. And as I prayed through that, it really became clear to feed the sheep, but start Bible teaching churches in South America where they didn't have them. And so it was a progressive thing. I mean, I'm serving and that's confirmed, but it just came from radical salvation to this feed the sheep to going to where it needed it, to now I would say it's gotten pretty defined of planting Bible teaching churches in South America. You know, that's what we feel called to do. You know what's incredible? I mean, you, you talked about, you know, coming to the Lord dramatically at 23 years old, but when it came to God, like, kind of showing you a little bit more of a clarity and a vision um, in, in South America and how that worked, and it happens, like, naturally, supernaturally. It's just like, yeah, like, I want to be a part. I mm -hmm. see a need. Mm -hmm. You know, Lord place upon my heart, and then you go. You know, Josh Lawrence, I was talking with him earlier this morning, and he was talking the same thing. It was, he went on a missions trip yeah. uh, as, as a young man, and it kind of like opened up his heart, opened up his eyes, saw yep. a burden, saw a vision. And so there's an important aspect there. There's a pertinent lesson there of taking steps of faith, yeah, right? Definitely. I'm sure you would have never uh, thought that where you would be in Peru, right? right? No. Because you're from California, I'm correct? From California, yeah. I'm from California. You've been there how long? Uh, improve for 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. yeah. And children? Uh, I didn't have any children. Now I have four. They were all born in Peru. Wow. So, yeah. And it's true. I mean, God's revelation, I mean, of calling is a progressive revelation mm. that comes one step at a time. I actually was dead set that I was going to plant a church in Chile because that's where I went first. But God used that to get me going in that direction. Right direction, yeah. You know? And then as I was offered things to do, I, I would serve the Lord, but I would also, I was like... I believe God's calling me to go to South America. So I began to just take steps towards that. And I didn't know what that was going to look like. And I didn't even know I didn't, didn't even know the city where I'm in now existed. But as he got me going in that direction, as we moved to Peru, helped other ministries, just step by step obeying the Lord mm -hmm. until he got us to where he wanted us to be, you know. Switching gears a little bit, Corey, um, we're talking about leadership, you know, and development of leaders and, or discipling those that are called to ministry. What are some of the key things that, that your ministry does or what God's laid upon your heart in developing leaders, identifying yeah. leaders? Yeah. So we we have uh, K-12 
Calvary Bible Institute Peru, which is, I like to say it's like a Bible college, missions training, church planting school mixed into one thing. And so first and foremost, obviously, we believe it's the Word of God that's going to equip and mature and to train people. So we have a heavy emphasis on that. But we also have, you know, a, a ministry class where people are preparing 15-minute sermons and they're preaching. Mm. They're also being required to serve in church. And so I am always, always on the lookout for those who are faithful, for those who are servants, for those who are going to take responsibility for others, you know, those who are going to lead on things. Uh, is there a humility? Is there a teachability? Those are like key mm-hmm. points. If they're humble and teachable, then I can yeah. kind of work with it, you know. So through our, our church, through our, our, our ministry classes, uh, through the, you know, our church planting emphasis and at the Bible, so I'm always kind of looking for those servants and those people who are humble, those people who are teachable. But then we, we also challenge them, like, look, our school, we want to fulfill the Great Commission through planting churches. That's what we feel like we're, we want to accomplish. And I said, so we're looking for, for those who are called to be senior pastors. Mm. And I'm, I'm watching their lives, and then I'll just be like, if you think you're called to that, come and talk to me. That doesn't mean you're going to be a pastor or anything, but if that's a desire, it's, you know, it says that if you desire to be a bishop, you, you desire a good work. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that. And then a lot of times, you know, I'll, I'll go for a trip because I have to, you know, like I'm right here for a week, and I'll come back and I'll talk to my elders, and I'll be like, okay, tell me which of these guys were acting like pastors. And you know, they'll be like, this guy was serving, this guy was helping, this guy was taking responsibility. I'll be like, okay, great. And I begin to have conversations with them. I'll go to lunch with them. I'm observing them. And then I start to bring them in for, for more meetings, you know, just with that group of pastors mm-hmm. until we feel like, you know what, we think this guy's called to be a pastor. And then once they do that, I'll start giving them home groups. Um, some of my guys, they'll begin to run our, our midweek services. I want to see if they can run a church. I want to see if they can teach, you know, do, do people follow them. And as they go through that, as they lead those, they lead home groups, we go, okay, this guy's called to be a pastor. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to start talking to them. Do you feel called to be here and serve in our church, or do you think God is calling you to church plant in another city? And that has to come out of their heart. Mm-hmm. You know, where, where they're going to serve, that needs to be what God tells them. And then as they begin to develop the locations at our school, we began to develop prayer groups with them. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, you know, this guy believes he's called to, to plant a church in Argentina. Him and his wife, his kids, they're getting ready to move there. So he's going to start praying. And all of you guys who are in the Bible Institute, all of you guys who are like in our church planting training, if you guys want to join that prayer group, you can. And so we, we, we try to form teams. Mm-hmm. So it's just this progressive, like intentional, you know, biblical training, personal discipleship, observation of faithfulness. Are they humble? Are they teachable? And as we begin to confirm that calling, then it's like, I want to help them land Mm. that calling into something tangible, whether it's serving in Calvary Trujillo or it's being part of a church plant somewhere else. But, and then we're going to help them. I'm going to travel with them. Mm. I'm going to go pray with them. I'm going to spend time. And, you know, we just sent 82 people into the Amazon jungle to launch a guy who had been with us for four years and felt called to the city in the Amazon jungle, and he's uh, already got you know like thirty or forty people wow. fellowshipping in his in his church up there. So That's, it's awesome. That yeah. is awesome. Yeah. How about in the ministry as a whole? You said you've been there for ten years. I've is been in Peru for ten years. It'll be ten years, December second. And how long for you walking with the Lord? I've been walking with the Lord uh, for about fifteen years. About fifteen years. Yeah. So so along the way, I'm sure you've had great leaders that have poured into you, um, people that have impacted you, maybe in person, maybe just through teachings that like just like connected with you. What's some of the greatest advice you'd ever been given when it comes to ministry, the call of God, yeah. developing as a pastor? You know, there's there's a lot. Obviously, it's hard to pinpoint one thing. Um, discipled by who's now my father-in-law actually, but he was the assistant pastor in my church for my first year going through 1 Samuel, Life of David. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was foundational for me, that my heart and my character was right before God, more so than mm-hmm. any activity. So I felt like we had a huge emphasis on character and heart in my ascending church, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't a super, like, out there doing missions all over the world type of thing, but, like, we want to be a... The, the terminology is we want to be a real Christian. But one thing I struggled with starting off is because I had this radical salvation... And I was kind of bouncing all over the place, and people were not sure what to do with me. And I thought for a time that I should just, like, calm down and, like, I don't know, just not be so zealous or, or committed or something. And then I listened. The, the Bible teacher I listened to the most till this day is Damien Kyle. I mean, he, mm. he did. Love I know Damien him, Kyle. Yeah, I love Damien Kyle. I mean, I know him a little bit now personally, but I've just been listening to him since I got saved, basically. And 
In Romans 12, it says to be fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And he told this story, hmm. and he said, when I was a young Christian, I was bouncing off the walls. Hmm. And somebody came to me and said, you need to stop bouncing off the walls because you're going to hurt people and you're going to burn out. And he goes, you know, I just knew that God was calling me to be fervent in spirit and to serve the Lord. And he said, I saw him 25 years later, and he came up to me and he said, I'm glad you're still bouncing off the walls. Mm -hmm. And he said right there, and it's like, it's like burned into my mind. He goes, if someone tries to, you know, quench your fervency for the Lord, he goes, you don't change. You don't ever change. You change them. But you don't ever let somebody stop you from passionately following the Lord. And it was like, it just, it's been in my heart ever since. Like, I am called to be fervent in spirit and to follow the Lord with my whole heart. And I've made tons of mistakes, you know, along the way, but that's still what we're doing in South America. Yeah. We're still wanting to, you know, reach every country, co country in this continent and plant churches and start Bible schools and teach people the word. And, and it's a high cost and it's hard work, but, but I know what God's called me to do and I want to do it with my whole heart, so... Now, I'm, I love that you gave that example. Damien Kyle, I've always loved his teachings. There's a, there's a couple teachings along the way, and I broke it down before, being at a youth workers conference. Uh, he uh, taught on Jesus being the, the light of the world, uh, one of the most phenomenal studies. But there's things that he spoke that day, illustrations that the yeah. Lord led him to that I've I've used multiple times, and it was a kind of it's a heart thing. Yeah, you absolutely. know, you know, there was a saying by Leonard Ravenhill. That says a message birthed in the head reaches the head, but a message birthed in the heart reaches the heart. Mm. And when you're teaching, you're led by the Spirit of God, you have no idea of the impact that can happen in a message and an encouragement. Because just like Damien Kyle is just like one of us too, right? He flesh and blood has problems, has issues, has uh, trials, testings, just like Pastor Raul and many yeah. other people. But as all of these men have continued to be faithful to teaching the Word of God, and they just do what God's called and gifted them to do, it allows to be impacted on your life, my life, and then God does that in our lives too, yeah. and other people. You've been able to teach the Word, and obviously being a part of Calvary Chapel, the, the priority of the Word of God is a high priority. Yeah. Um, what is, what's your favorite book of the Bible, if you have one, yeah. um, to teach or something that just connects with you? There's, there's several. I mean, it's hard to choose one book of the Bible, but um, it's it's probably in between Nehemiah and 2 Corinthians. And I, I taught out of 2 Corinthians today, mm -hmm. um, but I love 2 Corinthians because it's like this personal... You know, when we think of Corinthians, I think the first thought is it's a corrective letter to a carnal church, which it is. But as they attacked Paul, 2 Corinthians, this response, is this in-depth, personal look of Paul and the ministry. And it is just so valuable from the first chapter all the way through to the end. I mean, when he says um, Christ always leads us in victory, mm -hmm. uh, that's, a, that's this picture of this Roman victory parade where the prisoner would be chained and they, uh, to the, the carousel of the general that would bring him through and they would have perfume and fragrance on the ground. And as they walked through, he was, he was this prisoner. But as he, as he stepped on the, the, the flowers, it brought this fragrance to the crowd. And Paul is saying, you know, I've, I've willingly become the slave of Christ, and I've willingly chained my life to his carousel, and, it, and there's a death that happens in that, but when I submit myself to him, he always leads me to victory, and it gives this fragrance of Christ. And I mean, I just think about that all the time, because as a missionary, you know, I love what we do, and I, do, I love Peru, but I miss my family. I miss a lot of things in the United States. I you know, we were talking about your son playing baseball. Like, there's no baseball leagues where I live, and it, and it hurts me sometimes that I don't get to do those things. Uh, but I always come back to, to this, this book of 2 Corinthians and watching Paul and how he handled all of those difficulties and how Christ led him in victory and brought life out of death, and it's just been so encouraging to me over the years. So I love, I love 2 Corinthians. It's, it's right there with probably Nehemiah as my favorite book. You know, you, you mentioned it in, in your study, and it's actually my ministry verse, and most of my Bibles I have in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, 16 to 18, yeah. is where that's it. Um, when I look at the light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more and exceedingly eternal weight of glory, which we do not look at the things which are seen, for the things which are seen are temporary and the things that are to come are eternal. Amen. That's where I had said no to my job when I had told my boss that I had to leave and I was going into the ministry to go clean toilets. And yeah. then he's like, what? Like, do it what? doesn't make sense. <laughs> but it, th what the Lord placed upon me in that moment was like a focus on eternity, God's real, 
He has a call for your life, you know, temporary aspect. I always struggle with like, why have I never been like a money hungry kind of guy, which my boss was like, I didn't really care about the big boats and the river house and all that kind of stuff. I'm not saying any of those things are bad, but right, right. that was never my desire. Right. And like that was his vision of success. And especially in the Lord, that wasn't my vision uh, of success. And the Lord kind of amplified it there. Yeah. Where it's like, because the Lord is laying upon you the importance of eternity. Yeah. And I, I love that you brought that book up. Yeah. Um, it can be a book that's overlooked. Yeah. Um, Second Corinthians, um, because uh, you said First Corinthians, a lot of people know it's a book of correction. Uh, a lot of things are there. But Second Corinthians is a great book. Corey, yeah. thanks for taking the time. Amen. Thank you so much for having me.